This is Olga Kirschenbaum with nine minutes of Creative Wisdom Podcast, where creatives share their wisdom. It is six questions in nine minutes because creatives have a short attention span. So let's get to it. In a few sentences, tell me who you are and what you do. Uh, my name is Scott Aaron from originally Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but now in Marlton, New Jersey, which is about uh, 70 miles south of New York City. And I am a business coach and a business consultant uh, teaching the art of human connection to entrepreneurs, network marketers, business owners, anyone that really has a business built around other human beings. And I have leveraged that and now teach it on the platform of LinkedIn. Love that. So what is your favorite part about being a creative leader? That uh, ideas are free. My business was actually created uh, out of a just an idea. And it's something that I learned in The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale, who was the mentor to Bob Proctor, who a lot of people are familiar with. What Earl went on to say is that, you know, if you want to create a business, just write down three ideas on a note card every day and do it for a whole year. Something will stick and it will turn into a business. And I was actually in the midst of, of growing a business when this current one was created, I was feeling the need for connecting with other human beings. And I, I was really feeling disconnected from what yeah. I was doing on Facebook and Instagram. And I remembered I had a LinkedIn profile, but was doing nothing with it. But were, remembered something that one of my mentors said to me, which is, you need to look yourself in the mirror and you have to ask yourself, how am I going to connect with myself today? And it was one of those light bulb moments. And I'm like, okay, the person that I'm looking for, the business minded person, they're not on Facebook or Instagram, they're on LinkedIn. So I dove in and in the process created a system. And my background was in health and wellness. So I owned gyms and I used to be a personal trainer and sports nutritionist. So I was used to being very structured in my own daily routine, but also teaching structure to my clients. So all I did was put structure around what I was doing on LinkedIn, how I was doing it, and the results that I was getting. And out of that was born a consulting practice where I now teach others. And that's what I love most about being a creative is we're never complacent. We're always thinking of ways of what else can we create or implement that can impact and help other people because the one of the core foundations of a creative is to solve problems. It's it's our job to create something that solves the problem that a lot of people have and basically impact that individual or that groups of of persons lives to make them better. Love that. That's really beautiful. Thank you. So I speak to a lot of creatives who will avoid the money side of business. They will pretty much do anything to avoid it. What are your thoughts on that? I love money. That's not a m money makes everything happen. It not only gives you the financial flexibility to invest back into your business. Last year alone, I probably invested close to $75,000 into my business and it's gone up every year. So my investments continue to increase. So I don't see money as an expense. I see money as a vehicle to create more money. And Again, I think this, is, this comes back to something that you and I were talking about in the pre-show, that it's, it's everyone's dialogue with money or how they were raised with money. If they grew up in a household where the family was living paycheck to paycheck or struggling, quote unquote, to just get by, those are core foundations that basically have been now imprinted into that person's DNA, and they're going to recreate unconsciously what they were taught growing up to just get Buy. And for me, I grew up in an entrepreneurial environment. My, my father was an entrepreneur. My, my grandfather uh, is, is, was an entrepreneur until he retired. My great-grandfather actually fled from Eastern Europe and he became a butcher in South Philadelphia in the early 1900s. And he was an entrepreneur. So it's in my DNA. I don't see money as evil. I don't see money as dirty. I don't see it as it grows on trees. But we create money. You have to keep the flow of money going. Don't think of the money going out. Even when I'm paying my mortgage or my bills, I don't see that as paying a bill. I see that as investing back into something that I purchased, which was my home. And those are just the operating things that need to get put back into it to make it go. What your belief 
and what your relationship with money is will define exactly the life that you're going to create. So if you, the relationship that you have with money is abundant, is prosperous, is never ending, then you're going to create just that. But if that mindset of money is of lack or just getting by or living paycheck to paycheck or being in debt or racking up credit cards, whatever it is, then you're going to refacilitate that as well. That is super powerful. So who are the creatives that you admire or have inspired you on your journey? There's a lot. My, <laughs> my wife inspires me every single day. She's just an incredible human being. She went from working in corporate uh, you know, working for two Fortune 50 companies, managing teams of hundreds to now running her own organization, us having a business together. And, and she always had that entrepreneur spirit about, about her, you know, literally just putting her two weeks notice when she had a, a six figure income coming in to just give that up to have more work life balance and start okay. what she's starting. It's just been incredible to watch from a, you know, from a high level. I would say there, there's two individuals that I always come back to. One is Robin Sharma, who I just love his principles on, on leadership and how he really is very intentional with not only the blocks of time that he works, but how, intent, how, how the attention to detail of his day is structured. And I'm, mm. I am very detail oriented with my the other one is Simon Sinek who got his big break probably about six or seven years ago when he you know the book start with start with why and his yeah. big TED talk Simon's view on the law of inclusion and and connection and being creative but also building an environment and a culture is just genius and that's something that's always driven me Inspiring. Thank you. So what is the one piece of wisdom or advice that other creative leaders should know? That your failures will always open the doors to your successes. I think everyone strives for success, but they don't understand fully that they need to fail first and how to get there. And this was something that I learned in one of the one of the greatest books I ever read, which is called Go For No by Andrea Waltz and Richard Fenton. Uh, Andrea has become a good friend of mine. She was on my podcast. We've done some recordings together. And just on the cover of the book, it says, yes is the destination, but no is how you'll get there. You have to fail in order to succeed. I live by something called the failure quotient. My failure quotient has to be astronomically high at all times because the higher and the faster that I fail, the faster I'm gonna learn how to succeed. And I think this is a concept that a lot of people, they need to just close their eyes and re-listen to this and kind of sit with it because it's the truth. Everybody wants to succeed. Everybody wants to hit a home run. But you know what? Even the best miss shots. Even the best will strike out. Even the best football players will fumble. Everyone fails at some point in their career, but you know what? You learn from those mistakes, you grow from those mistakes, and that's how the successes end up following. Because you think about what chefs have to go through. Yeah. Perfecting those, do you think they just sat there and like, <laughs> well, here's the dish, it's done. Do you know how many taste tests they had to do where it was too salty, it was too sweet, it didn't have enough pepper, it had too much pepper? It is always about perfecting the process by mm. being perfectly imperfect. That's what it's all about. And it's failing forward, learning from those mistakes, because now you're building a, a roadway. Now you're building a route in order from how to succeed. Then when you start to fall in love with failure, it doesn't bother you anymore because you know you're one step closer to success. And that's the one thing that creatives always need to realize. Powerful. So now... The most important question of the podcast, Kakaya Vasha Lubima Musica, or in English, what's your favorite music? I have a very diverse musical background. So family wise, Earth, Wind and Fire and 70s funk, but personally, Fish will always have a, a, a very meaningful place in my heart. Thank you, Scott, for being on. What is the best way for the listeners to get in touch with you? So my website, www.scotterron.net, that's two T's, two A's, but I'm also very omnipresent on social media. You can find me on LinkedIn and Facebook under Scott Aaron, or my handle on Instagram is at Scott Aaron LinkedIn, and would love to connect with you. Awesome. This is Olga Kirschenbaum with nine minutes of Creative Wisdom Podcast where creatives share their wisdom. Make sure you check out my blog at ragstoriches.consulting.com. 
to get money insights you haven't heard before.